Good morning everyone, welcome back to our channel. We're Nicole and Nico, full-time travelers currently exploring Korea. A notable part about this country is the ongoing conflict between North and South Korea. So today we are visiting the demilitarized zone north of Seoul to learn more about this important part of history. So it is nice and early. We are waiting for our bus because in order to go to the DMZ, you've got to join a group tour. So today we've joined a tour. They're supposed to pick us up here any minute. Something we didn't really appreciate before coming to Korea was how close the capital city Seoul was to the North Korean border. Our bus ride was only about an hour. However, in that time, I ended up with a terrible headache. So it was a bit difficult to vlog throughout the day, but we really made the most of it and I pushed through the bus ride until we arrived at Imjingak Park. We got off the bus and immediately our guide began walking us through the parts of Korea's history that are most relevant to the demilitarized zone. She told us how up until around 80 years ago, it was all just one country. In 1950, a war broke out as North Korea attempted to unify the peninsula of Korea under communist rule. South Korea pushed back the invasion to the 38th parallel where the war ended in a ceasefire and resulted in the division of North and South Korea that we still see today. Imjingak Park was established in 1972 as a reminder of the war and to console those who were unable to return to their homelands due to the sudden division of the Korean Peninsula. Yeah, right now we're at Imjingak Park. It's actually, it's a beautiful area. Like you can just come here and walk around. People come with their families. There's a lot of memorial gardens around and statues and uh, signs informing you of like what's happening between North and South Korea, telling us a bit about the history. Um, but it's really a beautiful area for people to come, remember their loved ones, because a lot of uh, people here in South Korea still have family in North Korea, who of yeah. course they have no contact with. Um, so it's a place to come, do some remembering, become educated, which is what we're doing here today. Learn a little bit more about um, the history, but also what's going on still today. Yeah, people mm. truly do still have family members that yeah. are essentially like stuck, stuck on the other side of the border. And yeah. this is, a, I, I think, a, a really cool park for them to come visit yeah. and feel a little bit of closeness yeah. uh, to their family members. Yeah, so it's a really interesting place to come and like first become, I guess, educated on what's happened yeah. before we head further on into the DMZ. Further and learn more about it. Um, but it is interesting that it's just like so peaceful, like right here in this yeah, park area. True. And yet we know that like tensions are very high here and there's mili strong military presence yeah. on very on like both sides very yeah. near here. It's really weird to like yeah. have this nice peaceful park to walk through and know that uh, there's still an awful lot going on that we're not seeing. So it's kind of strange. We're like at the DMZ and like just across the parking lot is like a carnival with rides and every once in a while I hear music from it. It feels very out of place here. <laughs> yeah, I gotta admit it is a bit strange because you can go go on some rides over there, do some grieving over there, and then potentially get yourself in a lot of trouble with the military by crossing the border over there. So, a little bit out of place for a, for a theme park. Although this park is a symbol of the pursuit of unification, it is also our first real exposure to the seriousness of the security around the area. Barbed wire fences, cameras, and guard posts can be seen pretty much everywhere, and the security only tightened as we hopped onto the bus and officially crossed into the demilitarized zone, or DMZ. The DMZ is a heavily fortified strip of land that acts as a buffer zone between North and South Korea. After showing our passports and crossing through the checkpoint, a strict process which we could not film, we arrived at our second stop, the entrance to one of the four famous infiltration tunnels along the border. We made it to the second stop of the day and it started off with like an um, eight minute movie about the DMZ, kind of explaining the DMZ and the, the want for unification between North and South Korea. It was kind of interesting. It was almost like played like a trailer. It was super intense. But now we are heading into one of the tunnels. So there are a series of tunnels that they have found that has been dug by North Korea underneath the, the line and into South Korea. Uh, with the intention of invading or like being like a sneak invasion attack and they've uh, intercepted those tunnels and we are actually allowed to go into one of the th tunnels called the third tunnel. All right, so we're actually headed down into the tunnel now, but there are no cameras allowed because we're going to be 170 meters from the North Korea border. So you guys got to go. See you later. A few moments later. Well, that was really cool. Wow, that was a, an adventure. Yeah. So that tunnel went way further than I thought it was going to, even though they explicitly told us how far you go. And it got cold. It's like 12 degrees in there. It got super cold. Yeah, it just went down really steep and then and flat. And it's so weird to think that like, 
you just like see all the like exposed rock edges yeah. and you realize yeah. that like North Korea yeah. came this far um, into South Korea because like from under the ground. It's just wild. The, the entire tunnel is like 1,600 meters. Yeah. Like. Almost like a kilom like almost two kilometers. It's really far. And uh, I just uh, blows my mind that they could like be in there for that long because I felt like yeah. I was a little claustrophobic just yeah. going down. The first part, like the South Korean made tunnel to like actually intercept the original Which, tunnel, mm. um, was like nice and spacious. But by the time you got to the authentic original tunnel, it was Logging like this, yeah. back in your head on the we roof. Got, you we got, got like little hats. little hard hats. Yeah, it's so interesting. You just like get to the end, and at the end of what we're allowed to go to as tourists, you can just like view um, like for more of the tunnel. And 170 meters away is North Korea. Yeah, like the border. Yeah, it's it, just like but literally like a small like viewing window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High little viewing window. It was kind of it was kind of anticlimactic at the very end. Yeah. Um, because like you just get, end up at a wall and then you yeah. see a little, you peer through and you could see like Farther the rest of the, the tunnel. tunnel yeah. Um, but it, I, I thought it was really, really cool. Yeah. It really felt like a piece of history that yeah. we were walking through. So as we're driving to different places along the DMZ, like the demilitarized zone, there's like all this fencing um, leading like from the road into the jungle. And it's got signs on it saying like, don't go over here because there's um, unexploded landmines over here. And our guides are there like everywhere. So you've got to be super, super careful to the point where if there's bad weather, they actually close the road because if the bus fell over into the road, it could potentially hit the landmine. So it's like right there. Kind of scary. So our third stop is uh, the observatory and apparently you can see into North Korea there to the point where you can, might be able to even see some soldiers. Wow. And uh, they said that you're free to take as many photos as you can of them if you see them. As you um, want, yeah. As you want, so. I think something that's really cool about like this tour of the DMZ that I didn't expect or that I didn't know was going to happen is that like we keep getting back in the bus and going to a different part of the DMZ. Mm -hmm. Because, again, something that I just didn't really like put together, like the demilitarized zone is like an entire, like it goes, it spans the entire country. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, width-wise. Um, between North and South Korea because it's the entire border zone. Um, so it's interesting, we're just like getting back in the bus and going to different locations yeah. along the border. I can't imagine the m how much resources it takes to like Madness. patrol the border and watch every nook and cranny yeah, right. and fill it with all this barbed wire. There's a ton of barbed wire. The Dora Observatory is our last stop in this tour. Here we can get a panoramic view of the DMZ, the border, and more importantly, North Korea. We're literally looking into North Korea I right now. I never thought I would be doing this in my whole life. Honestly, it's, I didn't. It's so strange to just like know that on the other side of this border here yeah. is like a just the way of life that's completely different from what we know here and what, and what, and what Koreans know here in yeah. South Korea. Yeah. I think it's strange because like even just the idea of like land borders like is yeah. such a like made up concept by it's, us. It's so like the a fact that like yeah. just this line changes the person's life entirely yeah. is like really hard to understand and like truly comprehend. It, like, um, it, weird. It's like imaginary. Yeah. There's no like physical yeah. thing there. It's just a human construct. Yeah. Of, the, uh, the concept of a border. Of a border. We just created it, right? And I think what almost like adds to the strangeness of it is that this landscape is so beautiful. Like yeah. it's so green. It's so lush. I yeah. see birds flying in the binoculars. And like to think that like there's obviously a lot of hurt that has happened here and continues to happen yeah. here. Um, it just feels like in such contrast to the environment because the environment is stunning. What's actually really interesting as well, a guy was saying that there's some mountains in the distance and they know that they actually have missiles there yeah. hidden in those mountains yeah. that could like come and strike on this side of the border. It just, it's a scary so, thought. It's strange because we're like standing here. Like, yeah, yeah. See the mountains and I'm like, hope, wow. Hope like, today's not the day. Hope today is not the day. On top of getting a clear view of mountains that potentially have missiles inside of them, from the observatory, we're able to get a clear view into multiple North Korean urban areas, including the city Kaizong. So what I found really interesting when we were booking this tour is that uh, they were saying that you're fine to kind of wear whatever you want. There's like no real dress code for this tour. But I have heard online that they prefer that you wear like things that are not like tattered or like, you know, ripped jeans or anything like that because I've heard that the North Koreans, if they get a photo of you with like ripped jeans and tattered clothes, they can use that as part of their propaganda. I have no idea what they do with that. Maybe they like to show that South Koreans are like 
I don't know, poor or they have all these ripped clothes. But um, I thought that was kind of interesting that even from this distance, they can grab some sort of propaganda piece and feed it to the people to like, you know, paint a picture of what they want the rest, what they want their citizens to see of the rest of the world. I am so glad that we chose to spend our day like this. I feel like I learned so much today and really the big takeaway, I think, at least for myself today, is that the real hope here, I think, is reunification and peace in the future. And I'm really glad that was like my takeaway from this experience today. Yeah, we had an excellent time. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like. If you want to see more adventures of Nicole and I traveling around Korea and beyond, make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.